Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 350. Each week uh, we meet here to uh, answer the questions asked on the uh, SEO Questions or the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight, we have uh, Tim Kapper. Uh, Tim is uh, a webmaster, uh, CEO of uh, onlineownership.com. And um, he's also a Google product expert. You, you can uh, uh, hear more about uh, Tim at uh, onlineownership.com. Tim is based um, about 100 miles north of London in Corby. Um, and David Rosam is about, um, oh, what would it be, about 30 about miles south of London? About 70 miles uh, south of London, yeah. Almost in the English Channel. Uh -huh. Uh, David uh, is um, uh, he, he's a, a leading internet marketer. Um, he's uh, a copywriter of many, many years standing. He uh, can be found at da David Rosen.com. He's based in West Sussex. Masataki Wasa is based uh, in... Um, um, Wimbledon in London, uh, he is um, uh, a, a, a Google product expert in the uh, AdSense uh, community. I think I probably forgot to mention that Tim was uh, a Google product expert uh, in the Google My Business community. All right, let's uh, get started. We've got um, eight questions tonight. Uh, won't take us long. The first one is from Chris Green. Um, question one on our run list. Uh, uh, it said 404 pages with no valid 301 targets. That's the title. Um, Chris said, hi, guys. We have an e-commerce store which has old 404 products with some referring domains. If we don't have um, uh, similar uh, products to 301, um, redirect them to, um, would the next best place be the related category? Uh, for example, if the product is a dress, um, redirect to the, co the category dresses. Uh, cheers. Yeah, um, I'd certainly do that. <coughs> but um, <clears throat> also, what I what I would double check um, before doing. I, like, I don't know how many. Um, I, I don't know how many you've got. Um, if it's a handful, yeah, not a problem. But you know, if there's thousands, I would certainly double check some of them um, and just see if there is actually any um was there any ever any traffic to those pages ha, do they have any equity of any shape or form you know do they have any links to them things like that because if they are you know it, it, and or you know you know if they were never getting any traffic and they never actually had any links to them then you may as well just leave them 404s because it's you know probably no one's ever going to be uh clicking on those um but of course, if they were trafficked and uh, if, if there was traffic to them and they have been mentioned here or there before, then certainly do it to the, um, to, to, to the you know, the, the category. Excellent. Thanks, Tim. Anybody else? All right. Um, number two on our run list from Kayla Block. It's titled, Is it bad to have more than three H3 tags? Um, she said, I am make, making a listicle and would like to use header tags, but I have more than three. Um, 
Yes, um, I don't know where she got this idea from. I don't think to to uh, repeat what uh, Michael Masters says. It has never been bad to do this. Um, so um, go ahead, use them, um, use them wisely. Yes, that's ex exactly right, uh, David. I like my Michael Martinez's answer. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Okay, let's um, cross that one off and uh, move on to number three. Um, on our run list, um, let's see it. It's from Vidra Kex. Um, it's titled, I'm, I'm, I'm really confused about the canonical tag. Um, Vidra goes on to say, I'm, I'm really confused about the canonical tag. Uh, if a global site is in English and the British site has slash en dash gb and uh, has a product page with the duplicate content found uh, also on the global site. Um, do I use the canonical tag on the product page of the uh, uh, glo global site? But does that mean that then if someone searches for that page from UK, um, they would land on the global page or would they still land on the UK page? Will the UK page still get the rankings? And also, if a Swedish page has the same URL name as the global page, apart from a slash SE slash product page, um, will then all visitors land on the global page rather than the Swedish page? Has the canonical tag made the global product page uh, the ultimate and true version? Um, if uh, that has made, if, if that has sense. Um, um lots of laughter all right how about it yeah th this is a this isn't a canonical tag question i don't think it's a it's an hrf lang question um although the canonicals will be there as part of the uh the hrf lang implementation um i got a bit lost in in the in the depths of this question but um Basically, if you set up hreflang as it should be done, um, you should get the right uh, the the right um, um, uh, you should get the right traffic to the right page because Google will know what is relevant to the searcher. Yeah, so it's it's a it's an hreflang um, case. Um, the global English site is a default for everyone except um, Britain or English speakers in the UK and for those who speak Swedish. Um, so that's where the X default comes in because if you're not in, if you're not a Swedish speaker and if you're not an English speaker in the UK, then you should be seeing the global English site. That's why the X default would be the global site with H left flank pointing to the um, UK version and the Swedish version. Um, each page, each version can have its own canonical because it's the true copy for that version, right? So two separate, <coughs> excuse me, concepts. Um, H left flank essentially says um, this page is the equivalent of this page in a different um, language locale. Whereas canonical states, this is the true copy, the true location of this resource. And if you're a Swedish speaker, then the Swedish page is the true copy of that place. So you know, each page can have its own canonical. I think I got it right. <laughs> Uh, it was, um, I, th I think, the best word to describe succinct, um, Masataki. It, 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 it sounded impressive. I think you, I think you convinced me. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy one. <laughs> okay, let's wander along to number four on our run list. 
halfway through already. This one from Albert Prano. Um, and Albert uh, asks a question titled, Emails Offering Amazon Backlinks. Um, he said, through my website's contact form, I don't know why people do this, um, but I mean, hassling people through their contact form, I could, wouldn't care if they were giving away free money, I wouldn't deal with them. But anyway, um, he said, I've been getting emails from link building services offering Amazon backlinks DA96, saying something akin to, this has nothing to do whether you sell anything on Amazon or not. Uh, we create a uh, page for you and your website will be linked on a dedicated page. This is a very strong do follow link um, to your site. A Google search provides little info about the, this supposed technique and Amazon's terms of service say you can't link away from Amazon. So what is this? Uh, is there uh, any validity to it? Um, th this is lies, damned lies. Um, it's spam, it's bad practice. It's, uh, it's something you should run away from. It's something that uh, you really shouldn't worry at all about its validity. There isn't any. Um, it's just another one of those schemes that uh, that strange people keep trying to relieve money from us with. So uh, I would uh, I would run. Yeah, I mean you can. Um, yeah, you can go and create author pages, uh, on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sites. Um, the thing is they tell you, oh, they only give you the DA of the, which I even hate cause it's a thumb suck metric, but they give you this, you know, of, of the actual the site itself or the top line of the site itself. Um, that actual little author page um or you know sort of business page or i mean it's essentially just um uh essentially just like a some kind of like citation on there um yeah i just wouldn't bother with them um yeah it's just a lot of rubbish man yep okay uh, let's go to the next here we are, here's one from Sarah Adams. It's titled Emerging Five Different Sites into One Mega Site. I'm working with a publishing brand that is going to be doing two big things in the next year. One, um, merging uh, five different sites and brands into one cohesive mega site. The big challenge here outside of uh, tech technical uh, SEO of merging multiple sites into one is merging different brands, moving from a subscription model to a digital membership model um, with tiers and paywalls. There are lots of examples out there in terms of publishing sites with paywalls and lots of examples out there of multi-brand sites, but I don't know of any that have both. Definitely not marketing by imitation here, but would love some examples of publishing sites with distinct brands or distinct categories that also include digital memberships. Does anyone know of any examples? No, not with all different brands, no. And I very rarely actually pay for, I just, it winds me up, these paywalls. Um, hmm, no, I don't know of any multi-brand on a site, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm the same, I, I hate paywalls. Um, 
Okay, anybody else? Right, number six on our run list, uh, it's from Jacob Elborn. Uh, uh, it's titled Earning Google's Rich Card. Jacob said, hi, I need help. I work in a company called Voice123, and we have tons of voice actor profiles. For example, uh, uh, voice123.com slash Brian Saint. I had my engineer set up structured data for all of the voice actor profiles so we'd have the chance uh, at earning Google's rich card um, when that voice actor's name is searched. Is there any way for me to easily check, one, how my snippet actually would appear in Google, two, if my snippet is appearing in Google? Uh, thank you. Well, um, my first thought is that um, there's a, a nice report in uh, SEMrush that will tell you what uh, um, what um, is appearing in terms of uh, what, what's appearing on Google uh, for for certain uh, for certain searches. You could um, put in the the guy's name or the woman's name and see if any uh, uh, any SERP features were uh, were being shown um, you could also see if if yours was appearing uh, you can do that for um, for different countries as well um, how I'm, I'm not sure I'm not sure of a tool that would uh, that would tell you what it looked like. Um, I feel I should. I feel there must be one around, but uh, I'm struggling to think of one. Um, but certainly, um, SEM Rush will will give you um, will show you who is appearing, and or you could you could just do a search and see what turns up. Um, um, make sure that uh, you, um, you use incognito, though. Okay, so I just, I, you know, you say you've, okay. <laughs> I just checked your structured data on that page. <coughs> and you've literally <clears throat> used the entire, you know, for description, you've used the entire page. And more importantly, you've got star, 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 important. Voice 123 is currently experiencing severe functionality issues. Your message through their system may not be reaching us. Please, uh, well, mate, you don't need that in your structured data markup. And I'm guessing if they did try and look at that, you know, after the first sentence, they'd be like, what is this? Like, you're already telling us that you're you, that, just look. You need, I would edit your your structured data. I, I would not have that in. I would not have all this other additional stuff in there e either. Um, uh, like five star service is the name of the game when Brian. No, you know, if you're doing about a person, you're doing it about a person. Um, I, I would certainly edit your 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 structured data on that. Um, um, yeah, yeah, I would certainly do that. Another thing is, is, um, let me just search Brian. I mean, I don't know what kind of snippet you're trying to, I mean, I already searched Brian, Brian, you know, and Google's already saying voice actors in a suggested, which is cool. Um, uh, but then there is a kind of featured snippets for not Brian Sane, but Brian Mercy. 
Mm. And then he's got his own site also. And on IMDb. So yeah, you should be trying to, if you're trying to be the authoritative one that deserves the featured snippet for the, 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 the search query, Brian Sainz, voice actor, um, hang on, let me check a shot. Are you using same as, are you actually, no, your same as is all to voice one, two, three. So it's like, so you, uh, yeah, I think you need to revisit this. Um, uh, okay. There's also the uh, the question of um, in this case I, I just done a um, search on it and the first on, on Brian Saint and the first answer is uh, um, is BrianSaint.com. Um, yeah, yeah. You're going to have trouble, I think, um, ranking over the um, the the uh, voiceover artist's own site. Yeah, I mean, if they're going to do an actual uh, featured snippet in terms of the actor itself, that would more likely come from either Wiki or, you know, uh, other, I don't know, I mean, I don't know about actors. What's an actor's name? I, I don't bother to remember these people. Um, there we go. Yeah, it tends to come from wiki and sort of other things, movie profiles. Whose profiles are these? Yeah, their own actual profiles appear, their own. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, if you were going to do same as, which I know in your structured data, you've got that as your organization. But if you were going to do same as, um, I would be doing their own sort of social profiles and things. Like David said, I, I don't see your site actually sort of hosting that, uh, hosting that um, featured snippet uh, per se. Yeah. Or at least not for the, not for the, the bigger names. You, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You may, you may for other ones. Uh, I mean, I don't know who you have, but um, you know, the, the other thing here is that uh, Brian Saint, the example you gave, has got um, an IMDb um, yeah. entry. You know, and that's coming in at number two. So, which then actually links to his his own BrianSaint dot com. Hmm. Yeah. Whereas you don't even you don't even reference this guy, you're treating him as if it's he's yours, in that sense. But he's he's not in that. Uh, yeah. I would, yeah, yeah. I mean, personally, say so if I was looking at this, I would I would like your pages. Firstly, I would sort them out. I would really sort out your pages, man. Uh, stars, important in capital letters and, you know, your first line saying you're experiencing functionality issues. I would really sort out your pages. Um, I would get rid of all these weird star things. I would structure them exactly the same across every single one. So this is, a, this is the key thing here. I would really look at these and structure them across every single one. Then of course, if they have their own social profiles, I would add those in. So look at an, a regular actor's 
um, you know, feature snippet or knowledge graph, right? And then look at those and structure it according to how Google likes to structure these things. And you, you, what you want to do is you, you want to become the authority, um, like IMDb, but for voice. But you need to have a proper structure in place. This kind of stuff just does not work the way you've got this page done. Um, you know, clients, it, this all should be in proper um, structured sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I would, I would really. Uh, that that's my own personal thing. If you were going to go down that road, so yeah. Excellent, Tim. All good points. All right, let's um, move to the next. If, if nobody has an objection. Okay. Number seven on our run list is from Abinda Raj Dangal. Um, it's titled Implementing Review Schema. Um, Abindra said um, after an algorithm update uh, for rich snippets for reviews by Google, I have this confusion on my mind. I can relate to that. Um, he said, uh, now, do we need to implement review schema uh, only through microdata or PDFs? Um, can we get uh, a snippet uh, even when it's implemented through JSON-LD? Thanks in advance. Uh, yeah, you don't need to change anything as such. You don't need to change the way it's done. You can Obviously, you can do it in multiple ways, but I mean, the ideal version would be JSON-LD. It's easy, it's, it's easy to implement. It's probably uh, the, the, the better ones. What you're not understanding is the rules around when Google are going to provide uh, the stars in, in, in the search results. Um, they are not going to be, I suppose, what they call self self-serving. So essentially, if you are a business, you can't, you know, you could mark it up, they're just not going to display it. Um, so if you're a plumber and you're going to put your plumbing page and, you know, if you're an um, optician, it's not going to be on any of your pages. The only pages that they are really going to allow them onto now are product pages as such. Um, they will allow them onto the service page. So if you're a plumber, it won't be on your home page. But for example, let's say you have a, a boiler page and you allow um, and you allow uh, users, and this is the crucial bit, you need to allow users to actually add, add their own uh, reviews, right? You can't use third party tools to extract them from one site to add it to that site. It has to be the actual site that, or, or the actual service or product that um, that that the user can 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 review. Um, but yeah, so so those are the kind of things in, in that sense. You can't just chuck it across an entire site, and you can't just chuck it onto because you know. I mean, of course, if you're a single page cafe. Um, and you allowed reviews on there. Yes, they you know they would honour that um, because it's the cafe and it's the customer. But it tends it tends to be a product now. Uh, they they've just restricted it on self serving, so um, you can't run them across all sorts of different things. And equally, you can't be using a third party third party tool. Uh, the actual reviews need to be uh, on that page. Excellent, Tim. Uh, thank you for that. All right, let's um, go to our eighth and final question uh, on tonight's run list. It's from Kelly Ann Crean, sitting on a flamingo. Um, Kelly Ann said, um, 
It's the, her question is titled a particular keyword in a particular country. Kellyanne said, hey, does anyone know what is the best way to check rankings for a particular keyword in a particular country? Um, yeah, so there's quite a lot of tools out there on the market that can do this for you. You can set it by a country. You can set it by a city, a town, a specific location. Um, I particularly use SEMrush, but you can use, I mean, there are a lot, and um, you could even use your Google Search Console, uh, filter it by the country you're looking at, and hopefully that keyword will be appearing uh, within there, and then it will give you, um, not exact, but it will give you a very good idea, but you must filter it by country. Um, to give you an idea on that. The other flip side of this, you know, uh, Kelly, that you need to start thinking about is it's not really, you know, checking out a keyword by country. The, the point is where that where that rank tracker is actually searching it for, what IP within that country. You know, it could be the north, the south. It could be somewhere, somewhere else. Um, you know, just... Or, it very rarely people search by 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 just by you know a country, and what you see from a tracker is not going to be the same for people in that country, in different locations searching for that same thing, because it may be you know if it's sort of affected by local, that could completely be different. Um, very rarely people actually search from a country uh, search setting. Very rarely. So, and, and of course, even if they are in the country and they search for a key that doesn't have any modifier in, in it, it will generally try and return a local search to them based upon their IP or their, their phone's geolocation. So actually just searching for a country not really beneficial. I mean, for you, like, I like put it this way, I wouldn't go and pay for a rank tracker just to check a country. Um, I would use your search console, and then it just gives you kind of an idea, right? Um, if you were looking specifically localized, then, yeah, you know, that ma it makes more sense because, you know, if you're looking at localized, you can try and understand, well, what do we need to do to appear more in this demographic? These are the demographic, or these are the, this is the, the actual city we want to target, not just like, you know, do you see what I mean? So I would just, before you go out and like uh, spend money on, on any of these trackers, I would just maybe uh, read up a little bit more on actual uh, where things are going to rank, how they're going to rank, how Google tries to serve different results based upon um, the search query and the, crucially where the user is located. Excellent. Thank you, Tim. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Well, that's uh, about it for tonight. We've done it again. We've answered all of the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group for this week. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week. But before I go, I must thank uh, Tim Kappa, um, David Roseanne, Masataki Wasa. Um, thank you for... Uh, uh, your contribution. Oh, Micah Fisher Kirshner is just joining us. Um, okay, uh, Micah, um, uh, thank you for coming in, but we're just about to go to green room, uh, sadly. Oh, <laughs> just my <Yeah>. luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hello. All right. Look, I, I, I must just also uh, um, th thank um, um, people like Michael uh, Stricker, uh, um, Michael Martinez, uh, and um, Richard Hearn, uh, many other people 
who answer questions throughout the week and um, their, their, their contribution is invaluable. Okay, as I said, we'll be back at the same time next week. Um, but for now, uh, it's um, good night.